Should you pre-order Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2? I just played three and a half hours of the open beta, so I'm here to answer that question for you. We're separating these first impressions into five separate categories. The graphics, the gameplay, the sounds, the modes, and of course, the maps. The last one is the one that I'm most excited to hear about your opinion, so let's get right into it. When it comes to the graphics off-rip, you should know they are solid. It feels like an extension of the original 2019 Call of Duty Modern Warfare, with improvements in most of the other major graphical aspects, especially when it comes to lighting, shadows, gun textures, environment, the actual reflections that you see on the screen. All of those animations and high tier shading effects are absolutely a sight to behold. Especially considering I wasn't a fan of how Vanguard handled that aspect. Performance wise, I didn't see many issues except a couple of lag spikes when it comes to rendering textures at a distance, but that might have been a system issue, not sure if it was a game issue. However, when it comes to the stability, it was solid the entire way through. Listen, I'm gonna be honest, I was getting clapped the first couple of rounds, so I didn't earn that many high tier kill streaks, so I don't know how well they mesh into the overall gameplay. But in terms of integrating the graphics and the overall effect that killstreaks have on your gameplay, graphically they looked sound. Textures and color were the main two areas where this Call of Duty excelled compared to its predecessor. It felt vibrant, colorful, and at no point did I say, damn, this looks like ass. It elevated the experience. The only slight gripe that I had is that seeing players at a distance obviously was a little bit wonky, but that is mostly due to the interference between map design and, of course, the cosmetics. But besides that, the graphics are on point. Now let's go on to the thing that everybody wants to talk about, the gameplay. Granted, this will change according according to your system specification. So to give you some background, I was playing on my PC at 1440p capped at 60 frames per second, mostly because I was streaming to two places so I couldn't go all the way up to 120. I had a pretty solid setup, so I had a cohesive view of how the gameplay works overall. The only main issue that I truthfully had was ADS speed. My God by Jesus, without attachments, the guns feel sluggish AF. That is obviously by design. The default classes are never great, but you have five attachment slots that are there to help you mitigate that. Besides that, the only nitpicky game play issue that I saw I already mentioned, which was seeing players at a distance, mostly due to the fact that some of the maps have high tier shadow effects that conflict with the cosmetics when it comes to somebody's body armor at a distance. Yeah, dealing with opponents at a distance if you're not using a sniper rifle might get dicey in some of the bigger maps. Surprisingly, wall banging is going to be a major aspect for all major game modes. The way that they've reworked bullet tracing and penetration feels like having body armor piercing rounds actually is going to do its job. I actually got hit by some AR ammo through some concrete surfaces and I was like, this just poured through it like butter. I've sadly been on both ends of that stick, so it stings when you get hit, but it feels oh so satisfying when you land those shots. Aside from that, the movement is a solid addition. It's intuitive and smooth. I still have to figure out my keybinds, but head glitching is no longer a main issue, at least for me. But everybody's main topic of discussion on the internet is, of course, slide canceling. Technically, slide canceling has been eliminated from all game modes, but people have found that by sliding, doing an ADS spam, and of course, jumping at the end will give you some sort of a similar animation. It's a little bit harder to control, but it's the most similar way to the traditional traditional slide canceling mechanics that we've seen so far in Warzone and the previous Call of Duty games. However, as soon as they announced that slide canceling was going to be done and dolphin dives were actually back in, it's all bunnies and dolphins the entire way. Don't at me. One of the coolest features that I don't see anybody talking about is the wall mounting, which adds great verticality and an extra strategic edge for your entire team. Check this clip. You saw that. You saw that. Oh, I didn't. Yeah, I got, I got wrecked there. He was... It caught me heavily by surprise. I was too stunned to speak to see it actually happen in live action. Because as soon as you mount, you can stay there or have the options to climb over the object or even check out your pistol and try to fire out some cover fire from above. This was a huge game changer, especially in Domination when you wanted to clear out different areas and check out what the enemy setup was looking like. It's completely going to change the way that you think about cutting corners and of course map strategy. Flanking and map awareness are the big main things that you have to master in any Call of Duty, but in this game, they feel essential. Just running around, running a gunning was not my cup of tea. But now that we've covered the gameplay, let's talk about the sound. To some, this is just a trivial matter, but to others, we know that having the appropriate sound advantage is the key from staying alive or getting the W. And I'm happy to announce that the sound design, at least so far, is pristine. Especially the dynamic audio, which happens when you cut through hallways and corners. Gun sounds were also crispy AF. I'm excited that the environmental and killstreak sounds aren't too obstructive to your overall gameplay. The best part was the improvement in spatial audio when it comes to footsteps, which as you know, is super important. Getting a clear distinction through spatial audio of when somebody is above you, below you, or around the next corner is a major clutch. So I'd give that a 10 out of 10. Let's talk about the game modes. You always have the classics like TDM, Domination, Search and Destroy. You know how that works. The most curious new entries that I think are going to be extremely fun are Prisoner Rescue and Third Person Mosh Pit. Prisoner Rescue essentially functions as a mini Warzone gunfight, but you do have team revives. I didn't really play much of it myself, but I saw a ton of great gameplay and I feel that that one is going to be my major go-to since it's the most interesting mode, at least that we saw from the beta. Third Person Mosh Pit is also 
also cool because it drastically changes the dynamic when it comes to gameplay. You have a higher field of view, although switching from third person to first person as soon as you ADS might get a little bit wacky. It just takes a little bit of getting used to, that's all. I will say it does seem like it's going to give a major advantage when it comes to peaking, especially in demolition and domination. Interesting, I will come back with further details. With that said, as soon as the official game comes out, I'll check out the other game modes and I'll give you my review. Finally, the most important thing, how good are the maps? Sadly, this is where the issue starts to kick in because I only liked two of the available four maps. Granted, this did not take into consideration any Warzone content. This is just from Ground War and, of course, the multiplayer section. We had four options. Farm 18, Valderas Museum, Mercado Las Almas, and Breenberg Hotel. The latter two are the only ones that truly caught my eye, especially since the open spaces in Valderas Museum seemed eternal. Lots of windows where you can get third-partied, and I only played TDM and Domination in those maps. A single round of TDM felt like it lasted 15 minutes, it was endless, and the encounters weren't actually that fun. Mostly because I got shotgun straight in the face or hit across the map with a marksman rifle. You know exactly how that feels. Farm 18 just didn't fit my playstyle. There's a lot of greenery, which leads to dynamic shadows, and that's where you get the issues at long range. If I can't see the opponent, I'm not gonna have a fun time looking for them. This is the only map, however, where visibility was impaired, so there's that. Greenberg Hotels offers a solid variety of encounters for AR, submachine guns, and of course, marksman rifles, if you're good with them. But if you're feeling frisky, my favorite map was Mercado Las Almas. Sleek corridors, heavy crossing in the middle, plenty of spots for ambushing your opponents, or taking a little bit of a breather after a confrontation. Tight corners, long windows, line of sights in multiple levels. It felt like a traditional Call of Duty three lane map. I was absolutely loving it. We'll just have to wait and see on how this translates to the other maps once the full game comes out on October 28th. But that is it, familia. It's time to answer the question. Should you pre-order the game? If I'm being perfectly honest, this experience actually had me excited to play Modern Warfare 2. I'm looking forward to seeing all of the weapon variety and of course playing the traditional maps. And so far, from what I've seen in terms of graphical prowess, mechanical changes, sound design, and the minor improvements to gameplay mechanics, I will say yes. If you want to play it on the first day, it's worth the price of admission. But I wouldn't blame you if you try to wait until the first round of bug fixes is made after launch day. Main thing is, it was way better than Vanguard and I had a solid experience. But yeah, that's the end of the video. I'll see you on the next one.